niggas try to kill me, but I never die. I made me cannons that they gone till I'm in the sky. And I ain't stopping on the mission till it's realized. And rappers claiming that they real, spitting real lies. Uh, and now I'm back up in the premises. Trump doesn't give a about black people, but if you look at the data, you look at everything on paper, he's technically done way more for black people than Obama has ever done. So you get the Tim Pool's uh, place. Meanwhile, he has a whole skate park situation in his backyard, which is really awesome. He probably had the coolest, most laid-back studio I've ever been to. Um, there was a UFO spinning on the desk. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks for switching the schedule. Thank you so much. I was bummed when you canceled, but we were like, you've got bigger stuff, you know what I mean? No, this is big stuff. Sure. Are you kidding me? I'm just a guy who complains about stuff on the internet, you know? Um, that's a great thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Just I doing know. the same thing for, f what, like 35 years and nothing changes. It's, it's odd because even when you talk to people, they talk about how Trump is making their lives Better. horrible. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you're like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so was your life the same before Trump got in office? And they'll be like, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Okay, so now let's, let's, let's take this back one time. So you think it's Trump's fault that your life has been like this since what, 2002? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, but it's, I don't know, it's some critical thinking that needs to be done there. And then also, um, you know, when you're just used to voting for Democrats and if the media tells you that someone's racist, you know, they believe it, unfortunately. Yeah. I was nervous going on Tim Pool's show um, just because I know his audience is like very informed and very into the details. And so when they're asking you about a bill that's been proposed on the House floor, they're referring to it by number, right? <laughs> they're referring to it. They know every single detail of this bill. And so they're like, do you support it? And you're thinking, I kind of know the summary of it, but they, but please know, they've read the entire thing like four times. That's Tim Pool's audience. So I was so nervous. I was so happy to see all of the positive feedback afterwards because I was shaking. And um, if anybody watches the Tim Pool show, you know that Tim, he doesn't have a ton of emotions going on. So you don't know whether or not you're doing great or not. He's just kind of like, yep, this is my show, I'm Tim. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the TimCast IRL podcast. I'm hanging out tonight with a very special guest, Kim Klasik. Hi. You are running for office. <laughs> yes. Thank in, you so much for having me. In Baltimore. Yeah. It's going to be, uh, you're going to win? Of course. You are going to win? I feel like I've already won, you know? Oh, ah, yeah. 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 Cool. We're going to hang out. We're going to talk. And of course, we're also hanging out with At Sour Petulids, That's the correct. wonderful producer. Here. Hey, how's it going? And uh, we got a lot to talk about, but I really just want to talk about, I think there's a really interesting... Uh, your perspective. You obviously had this very viral ad, 12 million views now, like basically 163,000 retweets. Massive. And you basically just talk about Democrat failure in your city. Yeah. It was eventful for sure. Um, I think we ate, was it chocolate pudding that night at Tim's house? <laughs> we get back in the car. Um, we were starving at this point. So we stopped by Taco Bell. It, at that moment, it was the best Taco Bell I ever had because I hadn't eaten. <laughs> so this is something that I will say. Um, whenever I would see people running for Congress, president, whatever, like the big races, I've always noticed that they lose like 10 pounds. And I would always be like, why did they get skinnier? And now I know. You have zero time some days to eat. And um, you also know... You don't want to eat something too crazy because you don't have time to go to the bathroom either. So, <laughs> but we ate our Taco Bell, driving down the highway, and then catching a flight literally at 6 a.m. the next morning. <sighs> that was a lot. Crazy. I hope this is real.
once we arrived, all I could think about is where do we get to eat? <laughs> I was starving again. We arrive in Atlanta, we get to the hotel, which was actually really far from the airport. So at the Solutionary Summit in the green room, it was actually very interesting. Like I wasn't in there more than 20 minutes, um, but it was pure entertainment. Well, the beautiful camera's here, Kim Tejeda Almeida. Hi, how are you? Could you see me? Hi, I'm Kim Klasik, how are you? I'm wonderful, and how are you? Good, good. I came yeah, in I'm from Baltimore. Oh! Thank okay. you, yes, yes. I'm hoping you can come to Baltimore before November 3rd. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be praying for you. Okay, <laughs> pray for me, pray for me, uh, yes. Are you already on Look here, <laughs> the most beautiful uh, woman I know. Wait, 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 who did who, did who wrong? Look! <laughs> Women. That's okay. why you got millions of hits with those red heels. Right. Well, you know, it's funny. They told me to wear sneakers and sweats for that commercial. And I was like, can I just dress like me? Yeah. They wanted to wear sneakers and sweats. Yes, I showed up with my heels and my dress on, and they were like, all right, let's go. I hope I get to talk about a policy I want to introduce. Oh, yes. Everyone keeps saying, oh, you don't have a black agenda. Well, let me tell you. Okay. <laughs> let me tell you about it. So I just want to tell this uh, room right now, and I've been talking about it for the past week and other podcasts and things like that. I've been working on something I call survivor to investor. And this is important in Baltimore City. I don't know if you guys know this, but we have 17,000 vacant homes. We also have a lot of uh, black men that have been what they could call corner boys uh, because they were survivors and that's what they had to do. So this is something that I've been talking about policy-wise. So with the survivors, the corner boys are different from the shooters. They're different from the gang members. And you have to understand the difference, right? So with this, uh, you know, walking on the streets in West Baltimore, I've been talking to young men and one of these young men pulled me aside and said, you know what, Miss Kim, that's what they call me, Miss Kim, I have money that I can invest in some of these vacant homes, but they're gonna ask me where this money came from. I wanna get off this corner. I wanna be a real estate investor. I wanna invest in my community. And I said, well, if we put these homes in a program, in affordable housing, a pathway to ownership for people to be doing rent to own, can we do that with you? And he said, yes, and I will get off the corners. So we hear a lot about amnesty for illegal immigrants. What about amnesty for those Baltimoreans, those boys that grew up in that neighborhood? So for one year, for one year, thank you. For one year, we're not gonna ask them where that money came from. For one year, they can invest in those vacant homes that are sitting there for $4,000 a piece. They can flip them with that cash that they have. We won't ask where that money came from, but they have to get off that corner. That'll put a dent in the war on drugs and also get them off the streets. They will become real estate investors. Those people will not be displaced in that community. They will live in those homes and they will go on to own their own properties. So I never looked at myself as a leader ever. Um, you know, I'm a middle child myself, so I was always just kind of doing my own thing. Um, but I think sometimes when you step up and step out, and, and I say that because being a black female Republican is not the easiest thing to do, uh, especially during the time of President Trump, right? Everything is so polarizing right now. So even though I've been a Republican before President Trump came in office, and like people could go to my YouTube videos and see I was on other shows and panels as a Republican strategist uh, since 2014, um, but, you know, people I know tie me in with Trump and I don't mind it because I think he's a great leader himself. Um, but I'm kind of those people where it's like, if something isn't working, why aren't we getting up and doing something about it? And um, I think that's just kind of who I am. You know, it's, it's not like I'm trying to lead the way. I'm just like, look, if we're all sitting here on this boat, right, and we're all in the middle of the, of the sea, and we have an option of either just sitting here until we die or trying to get the heck back to land. 
I'm doing whatever it takes to get us all back to land. I don't, I don't care if anyone else is with me. I don't care if you're rowing, you know, your oar or not. I am going to try to get us back to land. So I think um, it's just maybe my personality, right? I just want to, I don't know. I guess I just get up and say, look, we can do better than this. So if I have to step up and try, then I'll just do that. Straight up, all the way up, with the same ones that was down from the jump day one. Same ones been around when there ain't funds. Even got love for fake ones that changed up like they break ones. I don't know the name, then believe me that you about to. Oh.